Well, Yauv Neves to Man United approved by Inio. Story coming in through from three different people. That is, <clears throat> um, there is a. Uh, we have Ekrem Kona, that he is a global transfer expert. Then we had a story coming in from Jam Jack. He's known as James Nancy. He works for the Mirror. And then Fabrizio Romano has finally gone ahead to put the fine nail in the coffin by really revealing to us the best of this. Welcome to our channel. That is Rokani. This is the United Matters channel. Hope you guys are really having fun wherever you are. Today we are really talking about one player that is Hiao Neves because you people need to really understand about this guy. Now, Hiao Neves is a 20-year-old Portuguese player. He plays for FC Benfica and he's just 19 years of age. He's going to make 20 years very, very soon. I think how many months from now? It's like six months from now he's going to be making... 20 years but he is 1.7 meters tall and he plays in three different positions of the midfield he can play as a cdm where casimiro plays he can play in the double pivot alongside casimiro or alongside kobe menu he can also play as a right winger or a right attacking midfielder now in all the positions that man united is looking about all in all the positions that United is really looking for to reinforce, looks like there is a player in his caliber <clears throat> that he's needed. And we have a story that was first brought to us by Ekrem Kona about this young lad, 18, 20, sorry, 19 years of age, telling us that Man United and Man City want to sign Benfica's 19-year-old midfielder Heao Neves and 20-year-old defender Antonio Silva in the summer transfer window. Now, these two players have been linked to Man United. There is Yao Neves, who is really a midfielder that one here to describe, and Antonio Silva, who is really a central defender. Very, very exceptional, and his ceiling is being said to be up high there. And when you look at Man United, they need these players. You know, <laughs> you might be having a budget of like 200 million pounds, but it can really be catered for when you get in players that can really play in different positions. For example, Yao Neves in particular. Yao Neves can play as a CDM. He can play in the double pivot. He can play as a right winger for the club of Man United. Now, when we are into the midfield of Man United and we anticipate the following players to leave, Ericsson, Scott McTominay, Amrabat, uh, Donny van der Bink, who else? Those are four midfielders to leave, and even rumors still hold it that even Casimiro can be really shown the exit or something that I don't really fancy to see him leave. So, if you're losing four, why don't you really get him this one who really plays in different positions? Because this guy is really very, very exceptional. At that age, he's being hired by very many other teams, and that shows you exactly how classy he is. And he is a right-footed player, but he covers huge distance. I like his intensity. His work rate is obviously going to impress the man himself, that is Eric Ten Hag. And I have no doubt that Ten Hag is really one of those that are going to hate to approve this. But the big question is, is the board of Man United ready to approve this? <laughs> that is the huge question coming in through from <clears throat> these people. But James Dancy. Uh, sorry, but Fabrizio Romano today while appearing on the United stand had the following to say about this deal of Yao Neves. Fabrizio Romano said, <clears throat> Manchester United have been scouting Yao Neves for a long time and are informed on the player's progress and potential deal conditions. At the moment, there are no concrete talks ongoing. So, United has been scouting this guy. And it's no doubt that he's being linked to Man United and very many other different teams. He might be the next big thing in the midfield. That is it. And I really love the player to the bone marrow. He does what a midfielder is all about. To let you, to give you a clear example about him, he's what we call a complete midfielder. He can play very well in every position in the midfield. If I call he can play on the right wing, can also play on the left wing. He can also play as a central attack midfielder. Every position in the midfield, he can really do it better. But I think it's better to really get him and really partner him with Kobe Mani or Kazemiro to do that job. His intensity is really great. But the most important bit of the most important thing I've gone ahead like about him is his um how is it called? His skill set. You know, midfielders like him are really rare. Who really take off players in the midfield, in the middle of the park, you know? 
they are really rare. Look at people play. I'm talking about midfielders like Odegaard. <coughs> talking about midfield, centratic midfielders like Kobe Menu. Talking about Jamal Musiala, uh, Judy Bellingham. They are few guys. They are few. You know, it's not these other CDMs that can really come out and really do ordinary things because we are having CDMs who can really do ordinary things. You know, in this entire year, only the entire three, four years, we've been talking about Casimiro, we've been talking about Thomas Partey, we've been talking about <coughs> Rodri, you know, such midfielders of class, the Jorginho's of this world, you know, but the Jorginho's are good, but Yao Ped, sorry, Yao Neves can have that skill set, take off players in the middle of the pack, so that's what makes him a special caliber of player, and that's why everyone is really wanting to sign him, and his price is 100 million euros, and is it 100 million euros? I think 120 million euros. And Man United need to obviously seek audience from the Glazers. Sorry, from Sir Jim Ratcliffe. And James Nancy, who has gone ahead obviously show us exactly what this story is all about, has come out and really said that the man has gone ahead to approve this. And the story reads, Sir Jim Ratcliffe looks set to approve the record breaking United offer for Benfica midfielder Yao Neves. This summer, Neves has a 102 release clause, and United see him as a priority. Man City are also interested. That is it. One of a kind. That is Yao Neves. He is one of a kind. That's what I refer him to because I know exactly what he does. He's a very, very special person, and um, every time he really gets himself going. He really is good. So if Sajim Rakhtiv has come out and really approved this deal, then, or is said to approve it, then that's good news to us, the viewers of this channel and the fans of Man United. Because for me, I <coughs> fancy talented players. I fancy talented players. You know, a midfielder should be a priority. Defenders should be a priority. You know, if we really get in two defenders and two midfielders, then the rest will be history. But the problem is, he approves it. <clears throat> What's our budget? What's our budget? Because for the available players on sale this season <clears throat> or in the summer, can they really raise money to get in only this one? You know, <clears throat> apart from the budget that United has. Um, Donny van de Bink, like 10 million pounds. Ericsson, like five. Those are 15. Hmm. Who else? If we put on Scott McTominay like 40, that is like 60 million pounds for Man United. Uh, what else? <coughs> mm, 60. Who else for sale? Amrabat is not ours. It's going to really go back. So that means we can raise 60 and we've been hitting more, uh, more 40 to add. I think that won't be big business. That would be bad business. But I would like, I would like this guy to come in through and then we get in another... <coughs> player like Amaud Wonana. But remember, there are even other players that United has gone ahead to be linked on or linked to. And one of those is um, one of those is uh, Frankie de Jong. And today, we've gone ahead to see uh, John Mata and um, the head of negotiation at Man United meeting Deco. We don't know what the meeting was all about, but it looks like it is really one of those methods that they are using to obviously sit in the obviously negotiated deal and Barcelona might be looking to offload players in this hammer transfer window. And maybe Frankie de Jong might be that player that we are going in for as a club of Man United. Now, let's go to the suspensions and absentees. Uh, when you look at his suspensions, he got a red card in 2021-2022 and missed out on three games. Now, for injuries, he hasn't had any serious injury. This is what I was really calling in for and looking in for. In a season where Man United is really having <clears throat> very many injuries and the injuries are really surging up to the max, you need one thing. You need to get in a player who doesn't have um, a horrible injury record. And this guy takes that box. He takes in very many boxes. He's young. He can really improve his game. <clears throat> and... He is not an injury-prone player. That is really pivotal in all the players that a club like Man United should obviously hate on to sign. So, Yao Pedro, deal said to be approved by Sajim Ratcliffe. 
and that's what really comes in through but i'm asking myself what is really going to happen are we going to start signing players before the sporting director really comes in through are we going to start signing players before ten hag's future is really put into where we deserve to be you get so i really believe that the priorities of man united will be revealed to us after dan ashworth joins the club of man united that is it he talks to eric ten hag and they know which kind of manager is really gonna come in through it's really naive to obviously start signing players when you don't know under which manager they are going to be featuring and if they start signing these players it will be a confirmation that man united has come out and confirmed that Eric Ten Hag is going to be the manager of Man United. All else, they'll be talking to a certain manager, knowing that's going to be the manager of Man United, and they'll be discussing with him, with the sporting director, on which players should come in through and be really the gate Man United up and running. So, guys, that is Yao Pedro for you. Sorry, Yao Neves for you. And we love him for one thing he's not an injury prone player. We've gonna hate to be suffering lots of injuries. And I think. Man United and Chelsea have gone ahead to affect, sorry, to be affected by injuries a lot this season. But for Man United, it has been worse because the most important players have not been available for this club. For example, right now, Mount is out, Malasia is out, Hoyland is out, Marshall is out, Luke Shaw is out, um, um, Lisandro Martinez is out, Harry Maguire is out. We are having eight injuries, you know, and. We are really being affected by those injuries a lot and man united is trying a lot to go through that so what are your thoughts about yao neves do you think sir jim Radcliffe is really good to go for this transfer 102 million pounds because one thing i really hate about these transfers is you might go in and sign a player for 100 million pounds yet your budget is really little in this summer transfer where we are going i don't want us to go for players who are 400 million pounds because for 100 million pounds you can get in two players who are really of good quality there is zubimendi 50 million pounds you can get him from rio sociedad you know good midfielder there is a uh, amaudu onana 50 million pounds you can get him comes in the club of money and do the job one will say would like to compete with the best but look at liverpool they went ahead and really signed McAllister for just 35 million pounds and McAllister is now one of the best midfielders in the premier league so it's not all about money it's all about getting a player for the right price there are very many other midfielders that are going to come in through and be really surge next summer you know and you're going to the euros you can't tell me that we can watch that entire tournament of euros among us all those players that we've been scouting and none of those is not going to really hit the ground running and really rise up to the occasion you understand so let's wait and see there is um this other guy that plays for inter milan nico barella you know those midfielders are there in plenty you know i would love this guy but the problem is the money we need very many players <laughs> we need two central defenders we need one right back i've gonna hate to see to see to it that they're really looking if a left back we need one or two midfielders because you're going to lose like two <clears throat> you know we need a center forward you know how many players are those we need like six signings to come in through at the club of man united so for me it's all about us getting focused by getting in players lisandro martinez the best signing for eric ten hag never costed us more than 50 million pounds but he's here and is the best signing of eric ten hag you get so let's rise up to the occasion give ourselves the best that we deserve as a team and the rest is gonna be history your reactions are welcome in the comment section below the muslims ramadan karim the christians we cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ and you also enjoy we are also really doing your lent period fasting ending on the first of march I'm out. See you later.